American lives at risk. A new report says that's the result when major American tech corporations collaborate with China. Amazon, Apple, Dell, Facebook, GE, Google, Intel, and Microsoft are supporting the Chinese regime's military and risking national security. But it goes beyond that. In this special report, we look at what happens when there are no rules in place, when American lives are in danger, and what can be done. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Household names, giants in America, symbols of American pride. We're talking Amazon, Apple, Dell, Facebook, General Electric, Google, Intel, and Microsoft. But a new report sheds light on how the pursuit of profit has led these companies astray. The Victims of Communism released a recent report, which found these businesses entangled in China's human rights abuses. The report, titled Corporate Complicity Scorecard, gives each business a grade on its ties to human rights abuses. Half got automatic fails. Dell and GE have operations in the Xinjiang region of China. That's despite the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, a bill since passed into law that bans U.S. imports of goods made in Xinjiang due to forced labor concerns. But it extends further than human rights. The report also flags three major corporations for directly supporting the Chinese military. Those three are GE, Intel, and Microsoft. Take GE, for example. A major contractor for the Pentagon and, and a world leader uh, in jet engines. Um, the idea that they're cooperating with the Chinese and sharing technology uh, is absolutely alarming. And uh, it's time that this type of uh, activity ceased. It's it's past time that this activity ceased in in, uh, in actuality. Uh, the fact that here we are in 2022 and this type of activity is still ongoing, and has been ongoing, really since uh, the 1990s, uh, is alarming and just contributes to the strengthening of the Chinese regime and the relative weakening of the United States and its allies in international politics. The report notes that while GE is a major contractor for the Pentagon, it also has a joint venture with AVIC, one of China's largest aerospace and defense companies. The report states GE's operations and partnerships in China systematically expose it to risks associated with forced labor and other human rights atrocities in the country. Moreover, GE continues to develop its presence in China, despite the increasingly clear security risks, normative dangers and threats that Beijing's industrial ambitions pose to GE's core business interests. That kind of partnership raises security questions here in America. Stephen Bryan, senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy, expands on those dangers. Well, I think it poses quite a, a, a lot of security risk to the U.S., uh, not only because these companies often work with the Pentagon, as, as uh, obviously GE does, uh, but also because the sensitivity of the technology and, and has national security importance in many cases. Whether you're uh, studying uh, imaging, for example, some of these companies are doing advanced imaging, uh, that can be used very easily for military purposes and, and is. And so when you have that kind of situation, you wonder what you know, what's really being safeguarded, and, and not very much, I'm afraid. The report points out GE is often seen as a champion of American manufacturing. Yet it is perhaps more integrated into the Chinese system, including the Chinese government system, than any other major American company surveyed in this report. Bradley Thayer, founding member of the Committee on Present Danger China, warns. Uh, China is forging, if you will, the fetters that are going to uh, imprison uh, the American people, uh, as they have their own population, as they seek to do uh, many others uh, globally. And it needs to be framed in that uh, manner. The American people have to identify this and not allow it to happen and put pressure on um, relative elective uh, officials uh, to end this uh, practice. If corpor And also to, to identify the corporations by name. Uh, who are the CEOs of this? Who's ru running these corporations and shareholders? Do you want to invest in these corporations? What about the other companies? 
A report notes that Dell and Intel have tech partnerships with a top Chinese government research entity known for developing military surveillance tech. A 2019 Wall Street Journal report says Chinese authorities use Intel's technology to monitor people in Xinjiang. Intel also works with Hikvision, the world's largest surveillance equipment maker. The U.S. says it's backed by the Chinese military. In 2019, Hikvision was added to the Department of Commerce's entity list and barred from buying restricted components from U.S. sources. I think the, the risk of loss of technology is a critical one. The, the possibility of giving China insight into how we do things uh, is a risk because then they can understand our defenses much better. And I think that's a serious uh, issue to, to take into account. And, and then the, the loss of, of, of uh, uh, leadership in technology, because after you start this cooperation, you're no longer the leader, you're, you're involved in a partnership. And, and so you're sharing technology on a one-to-one -one basis. And so I think that's very dangerous too. As for Microsoft, the report says the American tech giant is helping Chinese military-linked companies develop their technology. That's through Microsoft's innovation hub in China. As example, the report singles out China Telecom's state-owned telecommunications giant that the U.S. Department of Defense has identified as tied to the Chinese military. It states the company is on the roster of the Innovation Hub's current members. The Innovation Hub says its goal is to combine Microsoft's leading AI research results with the rich industry experience of member companies in China. Microsoft also works with military-linked companies to tailor products directly to the Chinese regime's needs. In 2015, Microsoft formed a joint venture with a company called CETC. Through that partnership, Microsoft provides a custom version of its Windows 10 software exclusively for the Chinese state. But Thayer points out the dangers of that relationship. Now for today's news, but before we begin, a quick reminder in light of our recent announcements. Our full episodes now premiere on NTD's partner platform, Epoch TV. We broadcast live at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, Monday to Saturday. Those looking to sign up for Epoch TV can click the link below. A shortened version of each show is still available on YouTube. After each episode's premiere, all of our full-length programming becomes available on our website. Find us at www.ntd.com slash China in focus. Outside those platforms, viewers can also catch our broadcasts live on TV. Visit ntd.com slash TV and enter your zip code to find out where to watch in your city. Debate over Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai and her sexual assault allegations is still heating up. Among the latest voices to join that conversation, a Chinese think tank expert claims that the Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai is unlikely to have been sexually assaulted by a former high-ranking official in the Chinese Communist Party. His justification? That the athlete is tall and strong enough to protect herself. That's according to a recent interview with 60 Minutes Australia. Given her maturity of the mind and maturity of her physical condition, she can take care of herself and she can defend herself in front of whatever man or persons in China. Physically, she is very strong. She is a very tall person. She is 175 centimeters. She is taller than I am. So for a person like my height, for example, trying to take advantage of Peng Shui, forget about it. You're indulging in your fantasy, I would say. Peng Shui is 5 foot 10, or slightly over 175 centimeters. Victor Gao is the vice president of the Center for China and Globalization, a Beijing-backed think tank. Gao made his comments after Peng appeared at the Winter Olympics last week. At the game, she took an interview with a French newspaper. But the French journalist she spoke to says he isn't sure if Peng is free to say and do as she pleases. Man, my regret uh, is that I don't know what's happened after the interview when she leaves the room. I'm not sure she's free. And nobody can say she's free now. Pong is the former world number one in women's tennis doubles. She went missing last year after she made sexual assault accusations against former Chinese Vice Premier Zhang Gaoli on social media platform Weibo. 
Her post was promptly removed. Later, she reappeared publicly a handful of times while accompanied by Chinese officials. Peng's well-being has since garnered global concern. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, on the flip side, has been claiming the athlete is fine. Gao has been nicknamed one of China's wolf warriors. The term refers to Beijing's aggressive style of diplomacy, often using bold statements and accusing other nations of wrongdoing. Gao has historically made a number of controversial comments. Let's zoom in on one of them. In order to counter the CCP's aggressiveness in the Indo-Pacific region, Australia has announced plans to build its first nuclear-powered submarines. The decision triggered a strong reaction from the CCP and a swift response from Gao. In November last year, during an interview with Australia's ABC News, he made an apparent threat against the nation. Armed with nuclear submarines, Australia itself will be a target for possible nuclear attacks. When the interviewer reminded Gao that Australia was planning to buy nuclear-powered submarines, not nuclear-armed ones, Gao responded. I would say the watershed moment will be if Australia is armed with nuclear submarines to be locally produced in Australia, Australia will lose that privilege of not being targeted with nuclear weapons by other countries And that should be the wake-up call for the Australians, the 23 million Australians. In another incident, Gao addressed the suppression of the Uyghur ethnic group in Xinjiang. In an interview with the BBC, he denied that Uyghurs were being detained in internment camps. If BBC believes in such allegations, then BBC is not telling the truth. You really need to do your homework. If you think China is a country of rapists, You are falsifying the situation to mankind. Gao graduated from the renowned Yale Law School. Earlier in his life, he served as an interpreter for late CCP leader Deng Xiaoping. He also held senior positions with American investment bank Morgan Stanley. And that's all for today's China in Focus. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.